Hello guys, it's Benji here from Around the Board Dance and I want to apologize for almost my two week absence. To say that I'm busy is an absolute understatement. I'm going to German school, I'm working and to fit all this in is relatively hard. But listen guys, no excuses. I'm going to be talking about the Premier League tonight and to make this video relevant because the Premier League is starting from about in about five hours from now. I'm doing a double header of predictions. I'm going to give you my predictions for week eight and judgment night week nine. Now, before I get into that, we're going to go back in time and have a look at what I said um, before the Premier League even started. Spoiler alert, I predicted that MVG was going to be the man to beat. I also predicted that Simon Whitlock would have to have a good start if he was going to have a run in the Premier League to give himself some confidence. I also predicted that Rob Cross was going to have to ground himself to, um, to realize that being world champion doesn't mean that he's unbeatable. I also predicted that Daryl Gurney would have to mix up being serious and being having fun at the same time for him to have a, a decent run in the Premier League, which I think he has done I, for his first try. I also predicted that Gary Anderson was going to lose a few matches that he would usually win and he'd be sitting in the what? middle of the table which I also predicted what the fuck? I also predicted that Gerwin Price was going to struggle under the pressure and he had a huge target on his back after the world championships things that I got wrong horribly I horribly got wrong that um, Michael Smith would not do well I, I predicted he'd be bottom of the table I actually, and I think it was a whole total role reversal because I believe that also Mensor Sulovic would have a um, much better run and also um, make the top four. Um, I, I also predicted uh, um, to get wrong Barney to have a much more consistent uh, season in the Premier League. His week to week matches are uh, fairly unpredictable and the one thing I horribly got wrong was Peter Wright. Now Peter Wright is in very it's much danger bad. of uh, being relegated in this season's Premier League and in my opinion I hope he does because that means um, Simon Whitlock will be definitely through Woohoo! but tonight is definitely a big night for both these two players both Peter Wright and Simon Whitlock but we're going to get into that, those predictions for myself a little bit later. Firstly, I'm going to show you a very small clip of what I thought the predictions were going to be before at Judgment Night before the um, Premier League even started. So obviously, I have Michael Van Gerwen as number one. He's the man to beat. Number two, I don't think he has anything to worry about from what you've seen in the Masters, and I still think he's one of the best players in the world. Peter Wright is number two. RVB is number three. Little bit of a shock, but I don't think it's for a shock for some to see how good he is playing at the moment. And I've got him in number three because I think he's going to be super hard to beat in a short format. Best of 14 legs, first to eight, he is going to run through five legs straight in sub-stages against some players. And from there, it's going to be almost impossible to cut, to come back and cut. What about him? I was already told you already, my dark horse after nine weeks is Mensor Sulovic at number four. <laughs> Nothing left more to say. I've already got, I'm going to have enough critics that are going to um, judge me on that one. Number five, I have Rob Cross. Some will have him a little bit higher, but I think at his, his um, debut year uh, as a world champion, from what I've seen in the Masters, he's still a... a Phenomenal player, but it is his first time in the Premier League, uh, <clears throat> and I think there's going to be a few draws in there um, that he could have won, but he sort of he didn't take advantage, and players going to uh, be able to scrape a point, and that's why I have him at number five. Number six, Gary Anderson. As I said, players uh, people would probably expect him to be in the top four after nine weeks. So I have him at number six. Uh, for the reasons that I mentioned before. Number seven is Simon Whitlock. There's a little bit of heart in there because the hit, there's probably a lot of bookies that have Simon to be in the bottom two after nine weeks and get relegated. A little bit of heart because he's an Australian. As you can see, I'm a 
My heart is in Australia and I want this guy to succeed. And I, not only that, I think he's got the game to do so. He's going price. Now, I feel bad for the last two, Daryl Gurney and Michael Smith in nine and 10, but I really think that Gurney Price is gonna make life hard for him, but he's gonna still find a way to win because I believe this guy is a fantastic player. He probably has himself much higher than number eight, I tell you that, but it is his debut year. And, uh, sorry, Gurney Price, yeah, number eight. Daryl Gurney, unfortunately, is going to be number nine in his uh, first year. I think there's too many players that I think um, are going to going to beat this guy. He's going to find wins. He's going to be so up and down. It's uh, it's incredible. He's going to have uh, weeks where he's, he's just going to dominate players and get the win, or he's going to lose, and he's going to have that... Um, he's going to lose by 8, 2, 8, 3, 8, 4. So that is my mentality with Daryl Gurney. It's going to come down to the wire. I think this is one of the closest field for the, the Premier League there has ever been, especially without um, Phil Taylor being there. Obviously, number 10, I think, uh, is Michael Smith. I think his fast style is really exciting to watch. There's going to be a lot of 180s. I think there's just going to be a few times, a critical moments, where he's going to have single doubles to hit and miss. Before I go any further, it's important to go into the form guide going into the last two weeks of competition. Now, first of all, Michael Van Gerwen, as I predicted, he is still the man to beat. Last weekend, swept through, got another European title behind his back, and even had a very difficult final against Peter Wright. Very interesting that I've quickly mentioned Peter Wright, that he has got it right, finally. Finally got it right. He had a whoa, horrendous three weeks. He's down in, in ninth position at the moment in the Premier League. Not really is disappointing. Um, but he's got that right now, but will it change for when he plays in the Premier League? That's the thing. Premier League pressure will all change. He's, when, he's never been in this position before in the Premier League where he's had to grind himself out of uh, such a low position just to get out of relegation. So pressure is definitely going to be on, which I think some factor in what happens tonight. Going on to the next player, we're going to talk about Simon Whitlock very quickly. The form guide says that he is playing well. He lost to the eventual winner on the weekend in the European, European Trophy or whatever it was. And he played well. He lost to Michael Van Gerwen. He had a near on 100 average and he played very well. Michael Van Gerwen beat everyone he played. So what can you say? I think that the Michael, the um, Peter Wright and and Simon Whitlock game is going to be very close, but the form guide going into the last two weeks looks good for Simon. Next, we're going to talk about Rob Cross. He's playing at a high standard. Nothing sensational like what we've seen last year, but he's still playing at a high standard, and you're going to see what I think of in the, the upcoming predictions. Um, Anderson is playing fantastic. Anderson is still playing some of the best starts he had the last weekend off. He doesn't play the European events. He's going to be fresh. He's going to be fired up. His back is no longer an issue. And going into the, the next uh, half of the season, he's looking really, really good. for. And he, he's going to push up through the rankings. As you've seen, I had him at six. I'm going to believe that he's going to still be around that six mark. Um, but in the second half of the season, you're probably gonna see a massive switch, as I also predicted, for him to make it up into the, probably into the top four. Um, Mentor Sulovic, Are you sure about that? Unfortunately, his Premier League campaign is probably going to come to an end. Still two weeks to go. There is a possibility he can get out of relegation, but, well, he's not in relegation, but there could be a possibility that it's between Mensor and Peter Wright. So who really knows? I, th I really think the, the least informed player at the moment is Gerwin Price uh, with his attitude. Um, and it might not even be the attitude. I just think that maybe the other players might be just better than him. Aww. It's getting him down and it's making him play worse week, week in, Aww. week out, like it's done to many other Premier League players in the past. Aww. Bottom of the table, it's hard to get the motivation 
and it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next two weeks. I've got it pretty much on the ball with uh, Raymond Van Barneveld. Not in the, the case that um, of, of his form, but where he is on the table. I didn't get it too far off um, when, when you're going to see what my next predictions are for uh, my new week nine predictions, but uh, he's playing. He's always going to be in that middle, around the top, around the uh, three, four, five, six. In that middle, never going to be relegated. Never going to be one or two. That's just the the horrible fact of what it is that there's going to be always one or two players, including Michael Van Gerwen, that are better than Raymond Van Barneveld. <clears throat> Michael Smith definitely got this one completely wrong. I'm very interested to see how he's going to react. The first time he's going to make it past into the uh, second half of the Premier League season. He's definitely probably most likely, in case it's some sort of disaster, he's going to be in the top four after, after um, Judgment Night. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does. He has the second lowest average, as a lot of the pundits are saying, in the Premier League for on average. Um, only, but he's managing to get the the wins and the points, which all that matters. He has got the game to take his uh, to take his averages to another level. So who knows? The averages can also tell a lie. His average average per night can automatically just go to a next level and go, okay, Michael Michael Smith will say, all right, I need to turn it up. I need to go to another level in this Premier League. I'm, I'm well into the competition now. I've got my feet wet and let's now show wow. the world how freaking good I am. All right, so week eight, I'm gonna go through this very quickly without any an analysis because I wanna to get to the end where I talk about where the table will sit after nine weeks, in my opinion. So, this week you have Mensor Zulovic versus Gary Anderson. Gary Anderson, too good, going to be 7 3. Michael Smith and Gerwin Price. Michael Smith is going to win this one fairly easily, 7 4 against Price, who's lacking confidence. Next match, we have RBB versus MVG, the two Dutch Warriors. This one, I'm going with uh, my mate Gav at Darts Planet. By the way, I'm gonna do a quick little plug. If you're not in on the Fancy Darts Prediction website, get on board. It is a lot of fun. It's absolutely free. You wanna get some bigger prize money. Obviously, you can um, register and become a premium member, and that way, you get yourself involved into premium only member tournaments, higher prize funds, and it's a lot of fun. I'm a little bit of a gambler, I have to admit, but guys, you have to get on board and enjoy. Been talking a lot of, uh, doing a lot of emails with Gav lately, trying to get his website even better. He's really ta um, uh, taken on board my insights into what I believe could, could be done to make the website better, which I appreciate his feedback and I see that he always responds to uh, people's requests, people's um, comments, and that makes you really good for uh, the darts community, Gav, and I just want to give you a big shout out. But now, going into the match of MVG and RVB, I'm with you, Gav. I think this one is going to be a draw. Um, some reason, MVG game drops and RVB's game rises to the occasion and they end up sharing the spoils. It's gonna be a six all draw. Next match is Gurney versus Christ. Another one which I believe where Gurney is getting better and better week on week. And Cross is, he's, he's at a really high level but he's just plateauing. He's not going 105 to 110. It's just around that 98 to 100 average which is perfectly fine. And I think this is a well-matched contest, and I think this is going to be another draw, six all. Last match of the evening, the biggest match of the night, Peter Wright versus Simon Whitlock. <sighs> massive, 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 massive. I'm going to go Whitlock to win this one, 7-4. I need to hope to God that there's going to be pressure on Wright to perform, to get points, 
and at the later end of later end of the match, uh, Simon Whitlock is going to capitalise on little errors of Peter Wright, and he's going to get the win. That takes me on to Judgment Night. Judgment Night, Week Nine. This one is going to be of more relevance to the viewers out there, just because. <laughs> By the time you see this video, the matches are probably already in progress, if not finished. So take my word for it, the last, the last predictions were done before anything has started. And you'll know that because I'm not going to get all of them right. And if I do, heaven to God, I promise you that it was legit. But anyways, going on to week 9, Judgment Night, this is how I see it pan out. Gary Anderson versus Rob Cross. Another match where I think it's going to be a draw. They're going to share the spoils. Two guys are playing fairly decent right now. And I think they're going to share the spoils. It's going to be another draw for the last night of the 10 player regular seasons. Then we have Gurney versus Peter Wright. Again, I had this one initially as a Gurney win. But after the weekend that's just gone, and Wright playing some really good stuff. Gurney's still playing well as well. So, I have this one as another draw. Six all, two draws to start the night. If I get this right in the, in the fantasy league, I do believe I'm going to catch up to some of the front runners. Suljevic and MVG. MVG, obvious winner there, 7-3, which, spoiler alert, will get um, uh, Suljevic into the bottom two and relegated. Just a spoiler alert. Next one we have RVB and Michael Smith. RVB I think will win this one 7-5. And lastly, Simon Whitlock to beat Price 7-5. There's going to be a push in the last week for Price, but I think Simon will get the job done and get the win. If he doesn't, I tell you what, he'll be very disappointed to lose to the, the last man on the table. Which sees the table look a little something like this. It's going to be MVG number one with 15 points plus 28 in first position. By the way, I predicted Michael Van Gogh to be number one, just to let you know. Number two is going to be Michael Smith in second position with 12 points plus 14 and he is going to be super stoked at that result even though he wasn't the top dog. Number three is Rob Cross. Rob Cross is going to be on 12 points plus nine as of my predictions. I got this one very, very wrong. Uh, not very wrong, I predicted that he was going to be fifth. A uh, third is, is going to be even better for Rob Cross. Congratulations. And then fourth, I have Simon Whitlock on 11 points plus six. I was happy for Simon Whitlock to be in seventh from the from week one, to be him to be in fourth if my predictions for the next two weeks come to fruition is gonna be awesome for us Aussies. Let's go Australia. Number five, we have RVB, which is not far off my prediction. I had him in fourth anyways. So and I have it as 11 points plus five. Number six position is Gary Anderson. Another one which I guessed correctly. I said he was going to lose a few that he should would usually win and he'd be somewhere in the middle. But the second half of the season, you're gonna see a complete, complete change. He is going to keep going up and probably be in the top four going into the finals night. Number seven is Gurney. All those draws have paid off in seventh position on eight points, negative four, if my predictions come to fruition as well. Definitely got that one wrong. Um, I expected uh, Gurney to be in ninth position and I think it's great that he has made the top eight. Now in eighth position, just getting through by a whisker is Peter Wright. Peter Wright with a last win of the regular win in my predictions. We'll get him into the top eight to have a chance of making the top four 
in the second half of the season, he'll have five points, negative 24. Woo! Negative 24, that, that leg difference is going to be hard to, to shake off. Then you have a ninth and 10th. Ninth will be Mensor Sulovic just missing out on four points, negative 16. And lastly, you'll have in 10th place, Price with a measly two points, negative 25. That's my predictions, guys. What do you think? I'm gonna hopefully make sure that the title is appropriate so everyone can see what is uh, what I think is going to happen after Judgment Night. I'm really excited what's going to happen. If you just let me, I'm going to quickly get to editing now because I want to get this video out as quickly as possible. I love you guys. Keep watching me. This is Benny G from Around the Board. Dark. By the way, don't forget to subscribe. Why not? Cost you nothing.